Y'all know in the Old Testament when they talked about David and David danced, you know, what they say was naked before the Lord. He, he, technically, he was not, you know, he he still had his undergarments on. Uh, but, but you know, if everyone say he danced outside of his clothes and everybody thinking it's now a good thing to do it because you dance and praise the Lord. But I think one person took that a little um, too surreal and too realistically. Uh, that person being Kirk Franklin. I don't know if y'all have seen his latest stunt. I don't know if you've seen it, but I highly doubt that David was doing these particular moves um, while, while I, I guess Kirk is praising the Lord. I I don't know, but I'm going to let you guys watch this real quick and you be the judge as to whether it belongs one of two places, the, the, the church or, or a strip club, a all male strip club, by the way. So you, you make the decision real quick. I'll, I'll show you and I'll be right back. All right, you met Magic Mike. That was Magic Mike, the fifth member. Um, it, it, did any of that look like it would be? What, okay, hear me out. He's a Christian artist. That's what he says, right? That's what he says. God, sorry, gospel, gospel artist. There's a major difference, apparently. Now you can you can be a gospel artist, but not not a Christian. Or can you be a Christian and not a gospel artist? Or I'm confused as to the two. Are you following God or are you gyrating for women? Or, or men, I don't know, Kirk. I, I can never tell anymore. Between the lipstick and stuff, I, man, I don't know. I'm lost. I'm completely lost anymore as to what you stand for. You went from something about the name Jesus to twerk, twerk, twerk on the stage for the Lord. I don't know how you got there, but I'm going to tell you this. You did not follow the roadmap that Jesus left. I'm going to tell you right now, that was not the roadmap he left. But for those of you who are still confused as to how this is what the church is producing, don't be confused. Do not be confused because we, believers, have allowed this nonsense to take place. You know why? We call it praise. Mm -hmm. You see, when we allow any and everything in, including worldly stuff, and put it under the guise of, God is okay with it because I'm doing it for his name. You're going to see people at the pulpit next with some white powder saying, I'm snorting in the name of Jesus is what I'm doing. Or better yet, look what I do. I got me a couple of ladies here and they're going to do a pole dance. Hey, didn't we just talk about that just today? It's happening already. Ain't that weird? Ain't that weird? That we can have a man. I use that term loosely when it comes to Kirk, by the way. We have a man who uh, is more than happy to go on stage and, and says he's singing about the Lord. And gyrating like he's singing about Nicki Minaj. <sighs> look. I understand that some people are going to look at this video and say, y'all are just nitpicking now. But the question, real question is, is, are we? Are we nitpicking? Or are we simply pointing out a very big problem in what today calls the church? Or better yet, what they call gospel music. I used to think, now this was me being probably a little bit of a, a green guy in the you know my past i used to think that when i heard gospel music the content and even if you did like a performance of it all would point you to the person that the song was about and there should be no distraction about who it was about today he is simply the word they use and the method they use is all the devil and i don't know exactly how people are going to pull themselves back from this ledge w without truly a divine intervention. But you know what has to happen for divine intervention? You have to welcome it. I don't think Kirk's welcoming anything to do with God. Remember some time ago, he was singing and he was doing this uh, little rap thing in a, in a booth. And, and he said exactly what he was trying to tell everybody for the last 10, 15 years about who he actually was when he said the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Like Biggie J and Nas, the greatest take a vote. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. In the previous line, he talked about who was the goat, Jay-Z. You don't find that kind of weird? And now he's gyrating in front of the audience members and in some cases on fellow stage members. That's freedom in Christ, right? That's what that's called. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say no. I'm going to, I'm going to say that's not freedom at all. <clears throat> if I were a betting man, and I'm not really a betting man, I would venture that that is the furthest thing from Christ. But it is put under his name. Real good. Jesus is all over that. 
talk to Kirk and he'll tell you, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But he's in a long line of people that claim one thing and do a complete other, but they slap the stick name on it. Pap, Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised if later on you hear Kirk comes out and says, well, I've been hiding a secret for a long time. I am gay. I'm gay. And the reason that things have been happening like this is because I was afraid that people would judge me. Sound, sound familiar? I don't think we should judge because Jesus loves me just the way I am. And there is freedom. Little note, it, it, there's not freedom as license to, to sin. And this is what he's promoting. If you are an unabashed follower of C Kirk Franklin, do you. But that just tells me that you're one of two things. You are unaware of the things he actually does. Or you follow Kirk Franklin and not, not God. Because in order for you to accept what, he's, what he showed you there on stage, you have to be completely separated from the creator of this world to accept that as worship and homage to him. It seems to me like what he was doing was the same thing that Moses encountered when he came down off the hill. But that's now passing as celebration in the name of God. Well, here's hoping that Kirk turns around. But we've been hoping that for, jeez, as long as Too Strong has been around, we've been hoping that. But it seems to me that he keeps going further and further and further and further down the hole instead of climbing up, even after finding his father. So that tells me a few things. He has put more value on the things of this world than he does on his heavenly father. And even in finding the person that he thought that he would need in his life, his father, it still didn't do anything to fill that hole because he is a lost human being. And he has been very good at disguising it with music. Say what you want. Music is a very good mask. Because you can perform while depressed, Kurt Cobain. You can perform while angry. You can perform and sing things you don't mean. Luther Vandross. You know, he can sing about women, but he was interested in, in men. You get what I mean? That goes for a lot of musicians in the Christian industry as well. They sing about somebody they don't know, nor do they have any interest in him at all. And their actions eventually will come to the surface and prove everything about who they are. The question remains is whether after they've shown you who they follow, whether you are going to continue listening to them or do the right thing and turn your back.